Hi hey everybody and welcome to Hack Mankind. I have the pleasure of introducing Sarah Foley today. Now Sarah, as you know if you've watched any of our content, goes by the name of Vertical Blonde. And Sarah has an amazing intro that's been written by herself and Jess Crafted to tell you all about how great she is. All I'm going to tell you is when I set up Hack Mankind and I assembled 27 people, Sarah is one of the first people I reached out to. Because every time I was in a place where I needed help and I saw her face, I felt better. I don't think I can give you any bigger credence than that of Sarah, someone I hold very dear to my heart um, and has a very, very fresh perspective on some of life's challenges. Sarah, over to you. How are you? Well, that was absolutely genuine and so sweet. Thank you. I'm great. I, I, love, I love doing these calls and it's really even forcing me to just get this beautiful clarity around this idea of living vertically, which when something is easy to us, we don't think about the details of how to explain it to others very often. So um, I'm really grateful for these, for these calls for that reason, selfishly. It is an absolute pleasure. So what are we talking about today within the world of vertical mindset? So we've been talking um, over the past couple calls about what it really is to live vertically. And there's these, these steps to really overcoming challenges and looking at anything in life. And that comes from acceptance and healing and embracing and elevating through our life circumstances. That being the seemingly good and the seemingly bad. I'll say it every single call. There is the prayer. It is, dear God, thank you for the seemingly good and thank you for the seemingly bad. For in this moment, I do not know the difference. So as we journey through life and we start to look at things as I don't know how this one's going to pan out. This feels really bad in the moment, but it seems bad in the moment. And look at all the good that can come out of some really seemingly bad things. So when I think about the vertical mindset, I thought, what is like the number one thing that if people can get it, then they're on their way. And for me, I think it is the most beautiful trait for any human being. I think it is super sexy. I think it is so captivating when someone is self-aware, that they stop with the sort of phony face, the, the fake smile, the I'm just going through the motions or yeah, everything happens for a reason, you know, that doesn't feel that they have done any kind of looking inside of just becoming aware of themselves. And we don't have to take this really deep. It doesn't have to go super philosophical, and you don't even necessarily have to do anything with it right away. It is simply becoming a witness to who you are. And it's who you are in the moment, not necessarily what's happening to you, right? We can get really caught up in, it's the circumstances and it's what's happening to me. Yeah, life circumstances are going to happen, but it's who I am, who I want to be, and who I become through those circumstances that is like the game changer. So all of that comes from self-awareness. That's beautiful. I think I've got a really, I've got a terrible analogy. So one of my points with self-awareness is I love an analogy and I'm not always very good at them. So one of the ones I used to tell people, managers specifically, so when a manager worked for me, you would see young managers come in and just, oh, rah, rah, rah. I'm like, what's wrong? And you go, da, 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 did this. And you go, okay. Is that in character? Well, no. Right, okay, so why did they do it? Well, it's not really relevant. That was very relevant. That's the most relevant thing. Like, what do you mean? I'm like, go and have a go and have a chat. Go and have a coffee and say, hey, what, what just happened here? Because this doesn't match my wearing of you. Because it means there's some kind of it's a big word, but trauma that's sitting underneath that that's led to that behaviour. And that's actually the cause is actually what you need to be looking at, not the symptom. If it's repeated, then yeah, fine. And the, the terrible analogy I used to use people is like racquetball, right? If you take a racquetball ball and you look at it in a, in a gym bag before a game, it's cold, hard, and black. If you look at it after a game, it's hot, circular, and black. If you look at it as it's just come off a racket, it's got one flat edge and it's got one round edge and it's very warm and if you look at it when it hits the wall it's compressed on both sides now the only thing that, that what i'm trying to get to here is 
the, the fourth dimension of time and context changes this object almost entirely beyond recognition. Now, us humans are really good at looking at an external object and seeing, oh, this is the same thing, just in a different state. But we're very, very bad at looking at ourselves and saying, I am the same person, just in a different space. Now, I met you at first, or we met a few times, one of the first times we truly connected was at Date With Destiny. Now, for anyone that hasn't been there, A, I would strongly recommend it when you can go again. B, Day With Destiny is a very raw experience. It's six days of stripping back your emotions, stripping back your guard, and making you very, very vulnerable. And there are people at that event that I, quite frankly, not necessarily very proud of my interaction with them. Not in a bad way, but in just in terms of I just don't have time. Because I was so in a space in my own that I wasn't there to be of service to other people. Now, if the people had only met me there, they could come away with the impression that I was obtuse, that I was very standoffish, but everybody's there for a reason. And that's just something I'd say to people, as you said, you and your situation are not the same thing. And if you start with that question of, as we just said before we came on camera, so why am I pissed off? Why right now? Why am I annoyed? Why am I upset? Asking those questions can often be a very fruitful experience. Absolutely. And I think that when you think about those events, that's why they're so rich is that we get into this really beautiful peak state so that we can go after the hard, really vulnerable, crazy things. And I have never felt so much myself, so alive, so incredible than when I do in those events because it's all stripped off. Like I, no one's got any expectations. I don't have to be anyone for anybody else. I just get to experience this and you get this incredible sense of self-awareness and self-awareness is super liberating. It is so freeing. It's scary as hell to go there sometimes, but it is so liberating when you go, oh God, yes, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. And a lot of the times then it's gonna get hard. You know, you, you were gonna start going after different patterns that got you there in the first place and patterns of thinking and how you're raised and the traumas. And I always say traumas, they come with a big T or a little T, but our body and our, and our, and our being uh, experiences them the same way. So a trauma at work versus um, someone that's been sexually abused as a child, they're very different things, but they're both traumas. They're both things that happen to us that we then start to put a perception onto, we start to give different meaning, we start to um, kind of banter with it a little bit. So I love that you you brought all of that up and I think that it, yeah, it just, it becomes such a liberating thing when we can actually just get self-aware. And because it can be really different and scary, I love to use the question all day long, is this nourishing me? Even last night, I had a beautiful evening to myself, which is very rare with this five-year-old in quarantine. And it was just like <laughs> heaven, heaven like on a silver platter. I was like, what? So um, I had a really great day. I went to the gym, the gym's back open again. I'm feeling so good. And then I came home and I had just such a simple evening, but I, I took advantage of nourishing all five senses. I made some really good food that was nourishing to my body. I had candles going. I had the smell of the food. I had some great vibey music playing. I had all my like big lights off and just the, the, um, the candle and the lamps on. All of my five senses were just, they were so nourished and it was so simple. You know, self-awareness and this personal development, it doesn't have to be so complex. It can be as simple as, Turn the lights down low. You know, I, set. I think all of personal development is simple. I think all I think of it's personal simple, development but it simple. can be hard. And I think simple and hard are very yeah. different things because you I, are opening the door to something that has been closed for a very long time. Yeah, I think there's, there's some things that you discover. I agree with that. There's some things you discover where you're like, whoa, I didn't know that. Um, and then that takes you to a new space. But, and the reason I say it is because it's, it's my consistent pushback because most 
areas of personal development, in my opinion, and it is opinion, are, ju are just exercises in marketing. Right? Because if I want to sell you, well, not you, you don't need it, if I want to sell somebody a diet book, my diet book would say, move more than you eat. That would say page one. Page two, it would say, if you didn't lose weight in week one, increase your movement. See page one. P.S. Drink water, eat vegetables, sleep well. And that would be my entire diet book. And next to most experts I've spoken to, they've gone, yeah, that, that pretty much sums it up. That's, that's <laughs> the basis of the entire thing. But you can't make that into a 300 page book, right? So you have to have a 5 2 diet or a red green diet or an Atkins diet. Or, and it comes, I think it comes the same with personal development. And this, it's a, one of our uh, other panelists, Ken, says this there's, you know, there's, there's only two things that hover hummingbirds and helicopters. You ain't either, right? You are, every second you are contracting or expanding. So to me, when people say, what is personal development? I say, it's choosing where the expansion goes. It, it's just choosing who you want to be. You're gonna change anyway. So why not be the person that chooses where you're gonna change? Right? Instead of allowing society and pressures to tell you, why, not, why don't you decide where you're gonna be? But you said something I thought was super interesting, right? You said, self-awareness is super sexy. Let's focus on that, that's fun. So I think it's is, super sexy. I think it is the sexiest thing anyone can put on. If I get to have a, a, an interaction with someone who is so aware, they're aware of why they're doing what they're doing. They're making those decisions to shift and change and, um, and expand in the areas that they don't like. They're looking for ways to use it all to their benefit. They are aware of what they're putting into their body. They're aware of what they're watching. They're just, they, they're, they're watching and witnessing themselves go through things. That person becomes electric. That person becomes so captivating and so appealing because you're like, what, what Kool-Aid are they drinking? Like, what are they doing? I want some of what they have. And I think that in a world of keeping up, in a world of comparison, in a world of pretending to be someone that you're completely not for the sake of likes, of shares, of friends, of people pleasing, in that world that we are living in, to have someone that's saying, I'm so aware of the crap I don't like about myself. And I'm so aware that I'm bringing intention to change it, to elevate from it, to use it. I am so aware. And then that, I, that, I don't know, that's super sexy to me because I think that I've yeah. had so many interactions with the people that aren't. And you're just like, gosh, I'm just exhausted. Like I, I just really don't want anything to do with that when they're, they're, they're a little lost. And I think that what you said is so insightful on the book of, of how to lose weight, right? That, that's an awareness that is so, and it's simplistic and it's totally relevant. The difference is that you have to have a motivator to open up the book. You have to have an intention of why you're reading the book in the first place. You have to have a direction of where you wanna go, why you wanna do it. You have to have that intention to even pick that book up. And I think that that is kind of where, where we struggle as a, success, as a society. So we got a lot of good books. We got a lot of good ways for us to improve our lives. But a lot of people, I think, become really rich in denial of, I'm good. I'm good. Like, I'm going to focus on the things that really matter, right? How I look on Instagram, what I'm doing to better the world by bettering myself, which just makes me look better because I'm talking about bettering the world. No, pick up the book, find intention, find reason that you want to actually use these ways that you can actually bring meaning to your life. And I think that that is the whole basis of what live vertically is. It is using all these seemingly good and seemingly bad experiences to lift us up, to uplift us, to bring us to another level in life. And it's, 
it's not about just being happy all the time because we're not meant to be happy all the time. We are human beings having a very rich human experience and it involves every, I've talked about this, every color of emotion that you can imagine. It is the, 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 the rainbow of emotion. It is playing every single note on that piano, the really dark and, and low moments. And it is the really high moments and everything in between. And only then do you get a really rich song. Only then do you get a really rich piece of art when you actually use all these very human experiences and very human emotions. And that I can talk from pure experience because it was very much lost in denial for a long time, um, especially after my accident, a good, good four years. And I've talked to people within this community that are 20 plus years um, after an accident or an illness and they're still in it. You can, you can tell in their demeanor of, oh, I'm good. I made the most of it. And their voice is just like cracking and chirping. And you're just like, oh, sweetheart, like, let me just give you a hug. You're hurting and you haven't dealt with that hurt yet. But I think that until we can really deal with the traumas, we can, we can really elevate. We got to become aware and we got to have an intention of why we want to even want to go there in the first place. Because self-awareness can seem really, really scary. So you gotta pack it with punch behind it with intention. And I think, yeah, I like bringing everything back to the science of this. And for me, what I think people need to understand is their, the majority of their brain power is, is animalistic, as I said before. And your amygdala is designed to keep you safe. It is not designed to make you grow. It is not designed to make you love. It's not designed to make you see contribution and connection. It's designed to keep you safe. Right, so I'll give you an example. Um, and I like using my own vulnerability because I hope it illustrates something to people and I hope it shows them that they can afford to be vulnerable because this is literally, there'll be 10, 20, 30,000 people that see this. So I was an addicted gambler. Um, and I would actually say, I still am an addicted gambler. I just choose not to gamble at the moment. I haven't done for a couple of years. And I spent three years in therapy going, and I eventually said to my therapist, I need to know why it's gambling. That's what I need to know. I need to know why. Why isn't it alcohol? Why isn't it drugs? These things are more fun. Why am I not a drug addict? Right? I can see how I would have done that. Why is it gambling? Why was it gambling? Why, why, why? And I woke up at three o'clock in the morning in floods of tears. And I remembered that when I was 15, Javier Valente ran a gambling ring in school. So whenever I was getting bullied by another child, I would run to Javier's ring. And Javier literally had like guards outside the door that he paid, other people we were at boarding school, other people he paid to make sure no one got robbed because otherwise no one would come and gamble. And if no one came and gamble, he wouldn't get his money. So whenever I was in danger, I ran to Javier's room and I gambled. Now, I had forgotten that for 20, 30 years of my life. And it hit me like, whoa. And this is what I'm, I mean to people. Your brain puts cases around things. If you ever look into like a, an abscess or a wound, a wound is a whole bunch of stuff around an infection. Your body and your brain naturally coats anything it can't handle. Because, and it's not for your benefit. It is at the time, at the very second it happens, it is for your benefit. But it isn't to your benefit for five years, 10 years, 20 years. And you have to do, Terry, exactly as you said, you have to punch through that trauma and go, no. I want to access that because if I don't access it, I can't heal it. And as soon as I worked out that I gambled because it was a safe space from bullying, I never get, that was it. That was my last, literally my last day. I'm like, I get it now. Why would I want, I'm not being bullied anymore. What do I need to do? So this is, we talk about why. What do I need to do? Well, I need to go and ask my wife for a hug. I need to go and ask my daughter for a hug. I need to go and play with my son. There where I, that's where I feel safe. I don't need this thing to feel safe anymore. This is where I feel safe. 
And that's just something I just say to everyone. There are so many traumas that your brain, in its million-year-old naive programming, is just trying to keep you safe from it. But I promise you, if you've got good family and good friends, and there is, you know, my, I coach people, Sarah, you coach people, almost everybody on Hat Mankind coaches people, and there are hundreds of great coaches within miles of wherever you live in this world. And there's hundreds of amazing therapists, thousands and tens of thousands of people that are dedicated literally to helping you have the strength to walk through that trauma. And if you do it, scouts honor, your life will be richer at the other side. But as you said, sir, it, it can be hard. That little, that piece of the walk can be hard. But on the other side, oh my God. Freedom. Fantastic. Freedom. Absolutely. I'm so grateful that you shared that story. I feel like I'm, I'm so captivated by it on so many levels. I mean, it, it is the epitome of self-awareness. It is the epitome of you just going there and saying, I, I want to know. I want to know this reason that I'm going there and, and asking yourself that really great and liberating question that got you a really great answer. And then once you figured it out, like you said, you could shift course. You could find another way to feel safe. And it's, it's mind blowing. And it, Peter, it's super sexy. So way to go. Yeah, hey. right there, right there. It's amazing. So, and I, I agree with you. I think self-awareness, and as we were saying off camera, the other thing, let's just add it because it's my perspective on it. So everybody, don't be afraid to be shallow. Right. One of the things that really frustrates me is watching somebody whittle away time on Instagram stories or Netflix. Now, perversely, I don't mind if anyone says, you know what I'm going to do for the next two hours? I'm just going to watch Netflix. Right. That, I think, is perfectly fine. Like planned, down, like you had last night, planned downtime, I think is awesome. But wasted time through accidental downtime, I think, is toxic. Now, if you want to yeah. sit and look at Instagram stories or whatever it might be for the next two hours, fill your boots, please do so. But not unless you plan to do it. Does that make any sense, Sarah? Or? A thousand percent. I think so. I think that we just, and you know, it's, that's just, uh, I think, the epitome of, of denial. It's another one that we can become addicted to. You know, that's very safe. I know what to expect in this moment. I know what to expect from Netflix, from scrolling Instagram. You know, you, you go there because it's, it's a safety thing. Um, you don't know what to expect when you start doing personal development, when you start asking yourself these really great questions. You don't know what's going to be coming up for you. That, I think, is, is why people go to that, um, to that, that place of just, like, kind of zoning out, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, but I think it just really comes back to that awareness of being a witness to it. Like, why do I want to go watch Netflix right now? Why do I want to zone out? What am I zoning out from? What am I trying to like avoid right now by zoning out? That's going to get you some better questions. And even if maybe you don't write then you just you're not in the mood, you're not in a great peak state to actually tackle it, you at least have a game plan and a guide for when you're ready. And, you know, it, it's all going to start stacking on itself. So becoming aware, having your intention for why you want to do it. Um, when I started going through my whole physical transformation, um, my before and after pictures, they speak well, like they speak volumes for what I did physically, but there was no picture for what was happening in my mindset. My entire mindset, my entire way of thinking, my entire way of perceiving the world and what's happening to me was different. It had completely changed. But I wouldn't have gotten to that place if there wasn't an intention. And so for me, I, you know, I tell the girls that are in the fitness program, you want three really, really specific goals. Not, I just want to lose weight, but I want to, for me, I want to look good in a bikini. I had not worn a bikini since I'd been injured and I live in Hawaii. I was in these one pieces, I was always covered up. I just, it was the, the they call it the wheelchair tummy and the way that you sit not having ab muscles, it's really hard to tone it. And I was like, I am just sick of this. And 
I really had always wanted to do a nude photo shoot, not Playboy wise, but like a, a raw photo shoot. And I wanted my body to be in a place that I felt really good in my skin because I wanted to be able to strip that down and, and do that for myself. And those things looking good in a bikini, that's extremely shallow. Hello, I will be the first to admit it. Who cares? Like that is what I wanted. That was something that meant something to me. It was, it was something that I could be proud of. And then the nude shoot, there was so, there were so many layers to why that was motivating to me. And then I wanted to be able to do a pull-up. Like I've never been able to do a pull-up. I can rack them out now. So proud of myself. Um, that's so modest. I that's don't modest. knock it. Yeah. You can do it, Peter. I never could do it even before my injury. And now I can do multiple reps, multiple sets. So, um, but you, you got to find something that's going to move you to make a change. It's got to mean something to you. It's got to stir something in your heart. When you think of yourself achieving it, when I thought of myself wearing a bikini at the beach, I was like, oh my God, I want that so bad. I want to feel good in my skin. We're out there in the sunshine. Like that's a moment where you just, you should be so carefree. And I wasn't. So when you think of these goals and you think of intention of why you want to start doing personal development, why you want to start to feel better and have more health and vitality, why you want to do better in your relationship, why you want to do better in your business, why you want to be better, do better, experience life better. You have to have an intention. There has to be something that, that motivates you and punches you along. See, and I'm always wary, right? When people say, I'm going to, I'm going to, upset a lot of people here when people say when you, they want to do well in their business and i go why, why do you want to do any business I, say, I really want to give back I, I there's such a part of my brain that goes what a bunch of shit right i i don't believe let, just tell me you want to drive a porsche or a ferrari or you want a big house and i believe you i understand that and i understand that when you get to a certain level that contribution does become important and so to anybody that says no, no contribution is genuinely my driving force I apologize if I just upset you because I'm not saying everybody, but it's such a passe answer. And the one for health is oh, I just want more energy on vitality. No, you don't. You want to look good in a bikini. You want your butts to look good in a pair of jeans. You want, as a guy, you want to walk down the street and women turn around and look at you as you walk away. That, if anybody is being truly honest with themselves as they hear this, that's the one that resonates, isn't it? I mean, that's what I, if you say, Pete, you're going to walk down a road after you've lost your weight, get turned up like that, and literally we're only going to go like that as you walk past. Say, yeah, that's what I want. Ah. <laughs> Who doesn't want that? <laughs> see, see, look at your whole, the whole body and your, your yeah. everything about you just lit up when you think about that moment. That's your driver. Yeah, and I think and I want it's for no one to, to judge. Well, and I think it's for no one to judge what drives us. That's the point, right? Like we're so afraid of being honest about what drives us. And that goes back to your point of, you know, giving back and contributing. We say what we think people want to hear. We do that all the time, but that's not getting us anywhere. And we're just continuing to lie to ourselves because inside we're like, oh God, I just really want to like drive a Porsche. Like I really want to be significant through this or whatever, you know? And that's again, really materialistic. Who cares if that's what drives you? But why do you want to drive the Porsche? Is it to keep up with everyone on Instagram so you can post that one, that one great post? Or do you want to feel your hands around that steering wheel? Do you really want to grip the leather? Do you want to feel your back going into the seat as you take off? Do you want the exhilaration that a Porsche gives? Or do you want the status that it offers? So start to question yourself. And if it's, if it's to keep up, Let's find something that actually does something to your soul because that is actually going to help you feel more depressed because once you get the Porsche, you're going to need something bigger. Once you get something bigger, I, I don't know, my cars, McLaren, whatever, you're going to always need something bigger. But if it comes to feeling that I've got this, it's like a 2010, um, it's this infinity convertible and I 
when I got injured, I refused. I will not drive a minivan with a ramp. Like I was like, nope, nope, nope. I wanted something that was still sexy and fun and whatever. And I got this convertible. It is now 10 years old. Okay. It's got like a dent in one side. And I will tell you this, when that top goes down and I cruise and I take that long road that goes from PA over to Lahaina and my top's down and the wind is in my hair, it is the only time I forget I cannot walk. It's the only time. It's so my sweet little boy, his legs barely fit in the back seat with his car seat and he's getting bigger and I'm going, I got to get a bigger car. And no one seems to understand why this car is so important to me, having this convertible. Why don't you need to get but a bigger car? Well, because he can't fit. Yeah, rip, <laughs> the back seats of convertibles are tiny. Yeah, rip, huh? rip the passenger seat out on the other side. Well, there you go. There's always that, a solution. That'll buy you another couple of years. I guess so. And then I can like never have another guest in my car again. There's always a, I don't know. Now I just got to get a second car, I guess. But getting hand controls on Maui is painful. You have to like ship it to Oahu and it's, it's hard. There's so many different things to, to factor. But what I'm getting at is that that motivator has to do something to your soul. Don't do it just because you want to keep up. Do it because it's a moment where you forget you cannot walk. That is a motivator. That is something that you can use. That is something that when you have to go into those darker places of self-awareness and really rip apart why you're gambling, why you're drinking, why you are continually making the same mistakes in your relationship, why you're, you're, you're driving your business into the ground. When you have to go into those places that you were really scared to go, you have to have a motivator of why you want to get to the other side. It's very true. You know, it's um, Date With Destiny. I hired two hotel rooms. Um, I had a four or five star that was about 25 minutes away. And I had a like $30 a night Airbnb that was about two minutes walk away. Um, and I was like, I, and people are like, are you crazy? I'm like, no, I know I need both of these. Right? Because when we do the, because some of it was too close to home, some of it was quite raw. So I literally walked to my Airbnb whilst everyone else is sitting in the hall doing their exercises on the floor, which I'm not comfortable in because I'm a big guy and I find myself getting quite aware of that instead of actually what I'm supposed to be doing. I went back to the Airbnb, sat on my sofa, turned the TV on, had a shower. So people are like, are you fresh? Are you ready? I'm like, yeah, I just had a shower. I'm fine. But there were other nights when I needed to wake up, mornings when I needed to wake up and I needed like room service. And I'm blessed enough at the moment in my life that I've got the resource to be able to afford it. So... That's what I did. Like, this is just crazy things. Like, and this is, I want to just, just use this as an example for people, because this is how crazy self-awareness can be. If I buy 750 mil sports bottles with the top on it, I drink about three liters of water a day. If I buy liter bottles or half liter bottles, I drink almost no water. Like, there is something about this that for some, and I still don't know why, but there's something about this that just, I find very usable. You see me just drink it all the way through. Normally I don't. And, I'm like, oh. and there will be a day when I try and work out why. <laughs> but until that day comes, I'm just happy knowing that I understand it. And I think that's something that a lot of people struggle with in, in self-awareness. They get to the point where they, they find something out and then they need to know why. And I don't think you always need to. I think sometimes you can just that's go, awesome. that's enough. The knowledge is enough right the now. The knowledge and the awareness is, the, is enough. You don't need to know why. You just need to know that it works. That is a perfect hack for you to drink more water. That's a, I feel like a definition of a hack is that you don't need to know why it works. It just works. So do it. This is why, it, this is why what we're doing is so good. You don't always have to understand why. You just have to understand what is motivating you. You want to drink more water. You want to feel better. You want to go through your day, not be dehydrated, help with your whole health and vitality. But at the end of the day, you're like, I just want to drink 
some water and it is annoying that I can't, I'm the same way. I have to on mine, they have to have something that is easy for me to open. If I have to screw a cap open, not happening. I, that water will sit there all day. Yeah, that's crazy. And that's my little boy too. My little boy, he has to have a um, super loopy straw. And yeah. if he doesn't have his loopy straw, he, he won't drink his water. But if he does, he'll go through four cups in a sitting. But you see, this is the perfect example, right? You said for health and vitality. It's not for health and vitality. Do you want to know what it is? It's crazy, right? It's crazy why I want to drink more water. I want to drink more water because I want to work longer because I've got so many projects on the go that I believe in caring. And I know that if I exercise, eat, out of the four, exercise, sleep, food, and, and water, I can sacrifice one. At any given moment, I can sacrifice one of those four. But if I sacrifice two of those four, I'm in a world of trouble. So if I say, right, I'm not going to get as much sleep as I need at the moment, as long as my food, exercise, and water is absolutely on point, so for this, for me, because of my body mass, that's three liters a day, 12,000 steps, 30 minutes of hard exercise, 200 grams of protein, eight sources of fruit and veg. If I do that, then my sleep can suffer and I'm still okay. But if I don't do those three, I cannot function on less than eight hours sleep. So I'm not actually doing this for health and vitality. I'm doing this because crazily, because I want to work more. And, and I think no that's one can judge just that. Just a perfect that example. Is, yeah. It's perfect. Perfect. I could talk to you for hours, Sarah. You're a, you're a living legend and a badass. Um, and I, I have seen the, the public safe version of your photo shoot, and it's uh, incredibly inspiring. So thank you for sharing. Yeah. Thank you for sharing about everyone else. Any final thoughts? You know, the final thought is give yourself grace. It, just because you are, want to be more self-aware doesn't mean you have to go deep and dirty and get into all this hard stuff. It just me means that you become a witness to you and how you experience life. And remember, this is not about what happens to us. It is who we are, how we want to show up, and who we become through it all that truly really matters. Beautiful. Uh, my final thoughts would be, I, we hope you listen, you hear this. There was a, I, can't, I can't find out who said this, but somebody said, hear everything and choose what you listen to. And whoever said that was super smart. Um, Every single panelist on Hack Mankind in their own way says the same thing. With Ed earlier, we were talking about the fact that your behaviors will lead you to, to your end goal no matter what. Now we're saying the same thing again. Self-awareness comes up so many times. Should you listen to us and should you develop self-awareness to any degree, which is I thank you for doing so for you. But the thing I would warn you on is you will get to a place where you then start looking at other people. Remember that those people are on their own journey. And remember those people, you cannot tell them self-awareness. They need to do it themselves. Um, so be there to support them and be there to love them. Love yourself. Be self-aware. Go and look good walking down the street. Drink some water. Sarah, you're amazing. My name is Peter Swain. I've been with Sarah Foley on Hack Mankind, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you so much, Sarah. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha. Bye-bye.